good morning everyone my name is Haman Singh I am with the I'm doing a workshop with the assembly this is my first workshop I'm going to be showing how to make a tic-tac-toe game using OpenGL uh, what is OpenGL? OpenGL is a cross-language cross-platform application program for rendering 2D and 3D vector graphics OpenGL is mainly considered an API that provides us with a large set of functions that we can use to manipulate graphics and images However, OpenGL by itself is not an API, but merely a specification developed and maintained by the Kornos groups. The libraries we'll be needing for this program will be GL, GLFW. It's GLFW is an open source multi-platform library for OpenGL. OpenGL ES, which is the mobile version of OpenGL, and Vulkan, which is a newer version of OpenGL, or you can see a different alternative for OpenGL development for desktop. It provides a simple API for creating windows, contacts and surfaces, receives inputs and events. Uh, GLAD or CLAD is an OpenGL loading library. It's a library that loads pointers to OpenGL function at runtime core as well as extens uh, extensions. It's required to access functions for OpenGL version above 1.1 on most platforms. Extension loading library also abstracts away the difference between the loading mechanisms on a different platform. GLEW is an OpenGL extension Wrangler library. It's a cross-platform open source C, C++ extension loading library. It provides efficient runtime mechanisms for determining which OpenGL extensions are supported on the target platform. OpenGL core and extension functionality is exposed in a single header file. GLM is a simple OpenGL math library which we should be using, which will use our OpenGL shading, shading language and will use vector 3 and matrix, matrix multiplication for it. Uh, to download all these libraries, it's, uh, just download them through Google, GLFW, just type on Google or go to the link glfw.org download the latest version same way for glad glad is a bit different because instead of having a set download from download file for everyone it creates a unique file for each system so you set the language you go to the website just by typing on google open gl glad set the language c c plus plus specification will be open gl in our case uh, the API GL, you set the latest version 4.46 or anything higher than that is also fine. Uh, there's no need to change any extensions. You can just click on generate loader and uh, generate. It'll generate a zip file. Just download that and store it somewhere, which we'll be using to link on Visual Studios. Uh, same way for GLM. Just type on Google Open GL GLM. It will take you to a GitHub page where you can just download the zip folder. Same way for uh, GLEW. Just download the zip folder from the official page. Now, before we start, I'll show you what our final product will be, will look like. Uh, it will just be a simple tic tac toe board left click makes you build a circle right click big makes an X and then you can just create multiple of them it doesn't have any AI or a win state at the moment which you can create on your own it's so just how to build a board how to build the zero or build the circle and the X on the users click to start off uh, we just in Visual Studio we we create an empty project, create a main.cpp. Uh, to link our, link all our libraries, we go to project properties, click on main, and then project properties. Uh, under C, C++, general, additional include directories. Over here, you add all the libraries you just downloaded. Glad slash include, glm slash glm, and glfw. Uh, make sure GLAD is on the top and then GLM and then GLFW. Same way for uh, link inside linker, additional library directories. If you edit, click on the 
yellow new line button and then you add all the libraries which you have just installed same way for in linker and input over here you just name all the libraries you have installed in our case it's glfw3.lib open32.lib user32 gdi32 shell glew and glew32s.lib for all of them apply and ok uh, before we actually start coding we have to check if our PC has OpenGL most modern computers come with OpenGL already installed uh, installed by the CPU provider or graphics card provider uh, to check which version of OpenGL you have you, you can download OpenGL extension viewer which will load up and show you which version of OpenGL you have for me it says version 4.6 which is more than enough for what we're trying to do at the moment the whole code is present available on github and i won't be doing a live coding i'll be taking code i've uh, put up on github and explaining over it uh, start we just include all the libraries we just imported start off we'll just create an empty <coughs> glfw window with nothing on it just to get us starting for that we uh, jump straight to the straight to the main Inside the main glfw int just initializes the glfw which we have. In a glfw window creates a window. You give it the name, you can give it any name. You call the function glfw create window. Give it this height and width. Give it any title. Let's give it hello world. Uh, monitor null and share also, as always. It's also fine as null. Error check just checks if the window has been created. Uh, glfw make current con. Uh, context current we will give it the window we just created and uh, uh, g glad loader just checks if glad has been utilized or not the way glfw works is it works in a while loop so every frame so as long as the while loop is active the window is stays created and uh, it changes the screen every frame so we have gl clear color which will be the which will set the color of the background or of the window swap buffer and wait events swap buffer is when uh, the next frame is called basically so at the moment you have one frame and then the next frame is being rendered in the background so what swap buffer does is it swaps it brings the frame which is being rendered in the background to the front and puts the one which is already being shown in the back to be rendered to show to render a new image on it if you run this we should get an empty window with nothing on it just a white empty screen yep you see hello world and a white empty screen uh, next we move on on how to create just a, a plain board or tic-tac-toe board the way OpenGL works is we have to give it line coordinates, the starting point of a line and the ending point of a line. To do that, uh, it's better to start off in on a piece of paper. Just draw a just draw a tic tac toe board, and then mark coordinates for it. How OpenGL uh, likes two coordinates is from zero to one and zero to minus one for both x and y axis. My tic-tac-toe board has coordinates from 0 0.7 and 
and 0 0.4 all the way to 0 point minus 0 0.7 and 0 0.4 same way for line 2 you give it 0 0.3 to 0 0.8 and 0 0.3 0 point minus 8 minus 0 0.3 0 0.8 for third line and minus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.8 is ending of line 3 and 0.7 minus 0.4 minus 0.7 minus 0.4 uh, try to give them the same it'll be the same numbers just uh, plus or minus the x and y axis so the lines are parallel to each other and not slanting to one another we have a function for creating lines as well we have multiple functions uh, before we create a line we have to initial we have to create a vertex shader line shader source and fragment shader source uh, OpenGL uses vertex shader and fragment shader to draw the object we ask it to draw and fragment shader is how it creates the how it forms the color on the objects the, the reason they're written on in in a different way than normally how we write C or C++ is because uh, this, this is not traditional C or C++, it's written in an OpenGL shading language. So that's why they are in quotation marks and with slash and to make, mark the next line. Uh, version 3.30 core is the version of our OpenGL. We just give the layout, start with the void main. GL position is where we want the, the position of where we want it to be drawn. And then the fragment color of the color of the thing for the fragment shader source. Now we come to drawing the lines. For that, we first define a vector two structures with just x and y coordinates. We initialize the vector two, uh, vector three with x, y, and z. And then we initialize a line which has the shader programs, which will be a combination of fragment shader and the vector shader. Uh, VBO and VAO. VBO is vertex buffer object and VAO is vertex array objects. It's this is where we store the vertex information, which we will, the line coordinates which we mentioned over here, which is 0 0.7, 0 0.4, minus 0 0.7, 0 0.4. VBO and VAO will be storing those and OpenGL will use those to call the line functions. Float vertices is where we store them. Start point, end point is whatever coordinates we give it and line color is the color of the line we want it to be drawn. We start with the line initialize function. It takes a start and end point. Uh, same just slice x1 with the start we have with the y and end of x and end of y start point vertex shader is where we slice the vertex shader we created previously so uh, gl create shaders so vertex shader we created trying to create vertex shader in shader source we give it the vertex shader name we created above this one and then one and vertex shader source is the name of vertex the where the vertex shader is address of it then gl compile shader we compile the vertex shader same exact thing for fragment shader I just mentioned we're trying to create a gl fragment shader give it the fragment shader source and then compile it link shader is we, where we combine both the vertex shader and the fragment shader so L points to shader group, GL create sh program. We attach the shader to the program. We attach the vertex shader and then the fragment shader and we just link the program. And you can just delete, delete previous shaders to save memory. Uh, setting vertex data will, is the, these are the vertex points which we gave it earlier, the start and the end points of the lines. Uh, GL generate vertex array is uh, the VAO and gen GL generate buffer. GL generate buffer is the VBO, and then we bind 
uh, PAO with the GL bind buffer is again uh, vertex buffer objects buffer data we give it the size of the vertices and we give it the vertices array we start with the GL vertex attribute pointer and we enable attribute pointer same for GL bind buffer and GL bind vertex array then we come to the line draw function which is we will take the return from this line initialize function GL use program the shader program which is combination of vertex vertex shader and fragment shader and GL bind vertex array which is BAO and we use GL draw array GL lines because we're trying to draw lines 0 is start from 0 and 2 is because we're giving it 2 points starting and the end so we'll just draw from there to there to call this first we'll have to initialize the lines inside our main and then call each draw functions inside our while loop we call line init and then vector to initialize 0 0.7 0 0.4 and vector to initialize minus 0 0.7 0 0.4 for four lines these are the four lines line 1 line 2 line 3 and then line 4 and we just call these lines inside the while loop so they are drawn every frame So we just create an error. Let's just create the lines and there's no more interaction with it. But we can see our lines are being created properly. Now to move on to creating the circle, the X and uh, circle, the X, the clicking, when the user clicks where the circle and X should be drawn and saving the state of the game board. Let's start off with creating a, a circle first. We have a build circle function for that as well. Circles are drawn a bit differently in OpenGL instead of uh, like lines. In in a because a circle is just a collection of triangles for OpenGL. Uh, with the center as one point we draw multiple triangles around the center to form a circle the more points the more triangles it draws the more smoother the circle is or the less ones it draws the more more it looks like a cube or a diamond than a circle so a circle function takes the radius the v count which will be the number of triangles you wanted to draw and uh, point x and point y is the position we want the circle to be drawn at. We just clear the vertex vertices and the index array we created. The angle will be the 360 minus the number of triangles we have and then the triangle count will be number of triangles we want minus 2. We start off with a for loop we're using uh, the number of triangle counts our current angle is i into uh, starting angle or i into the angle which we created before x is the point x point wherever the user clicks plus the radius we want the circle to be into uh, cos radian of the current angle same for y point y will be where we are clicking plus the radius into sine radian of the current angle Z will remain zero always because it's a 2D object, not a 3D. We don't have any depth to it. We just save all these points into our vertices, vertex, vertices array. Then we move on to indices using triangle count indices because the triangle only has three sides, so we just fill it with zero, i plus one, and i plus two. Based on number of triangles we're trying to draw. We do the same 
uh, generation of vertex array and uh, vertex buffer how we did in the creation of lines we generate vertex array generate buffer which is both for vertex buffer element buffer we bind the buffer in the buffer data we give it the vertices size and the vertices array starting from zero we enable the vertex attribute array same for bind buffer for elements we give it the indices size and indices position from starting zero uh, we use gl draw array triangles instead of lines because we are trying to draw triangles starting from zero and we give it vertices size depending on how many triangles is trying to draw same way for elements gl triangles give it the indices size and an unsigned int and zero this function will draw the triangle uh, depending on wherever we click and whatever values we give it now we move on to drawing an x uh, x is much simpler than circle it's the same thing how we did for line uh, instead we'll be using the same function basically all we do is uh, the function takes a point x and point y which will be uh, where the x and y corners are where the user is clicking and we call the line initialize function of uh, point x plus 0 0.1 and point y plus 0 0.1 because x and y are just, uh, just, it's just a single point we need to tell OpenGL to use that point and draw a line use, using, using that so we do plus 0 0.1 on both sides so it increases the line on one corner and then minus minus 0 0.1 so it increases the line on the negative corner we do that for both the lines on different diagonals it becomes a x and then we just draw both of these lines before we go on to mouse click functions we have to first uh, keep track the game okay, keep track of uh, the game object where what is being drawn where where it should be drawn because the way OpenGL works is it it creates a new frame uh, creates a new frame every second and that frame starts from scratch so the way our because if in our while loop we have the lines all the lines drawn so every frame these lines will be drawn but we don't have a circle or a anywhere in a while loop so OpenShift does not know that it needs to draw them every frame so if you if you click if you have the mouse click function you draw a circle once and then the next frame the lines are drawn again the circle is not drawn because OpenShift does not know it doesn't remember what happened in the previous frame for that we have a we need to maintain a game state we have three uh, three arrays, three 2D arrays you can say matrices for game states the first one is normal game state this keeps track of which uh, which box has a zero a circle or an X or is just empty zero means it's empty there, there has been no input there if it's one it'll be a circle if it's two it'll be an X or you can change it around however you like board boundary is the coordinates where uh, where the user can click and register as an x or a zero because we don't want the user to click on any suppose if this is our board we don't want the user to click on any corner of the screen and it for it to draw a circle over there or we don't want the user to click in the middle of two lines and it to register as a x or a circle we only want the coordinates we only want the click to register if the user clicks within a box so for that we give it the boundary boundary is just 0 0.3 this corner and 0 0.7 0 0.4 so anything any uh, any click after the y axis 0 0.4 or after the x axis uh, 0 0.3 it won't register for the top right box it will register it for some other box so it won't even register at all if it's outside the boundary an XO placement is uh, is the same thing for border boundary but instead of uh, if we click it we we want it to be centered 
so it's uniform with all other clicks so if, if, if you click it one corner or if you click in the top corner or something else it doesn't look aligned so we give it the center position to own, always draw in the center of these boxes the way we find the center is through these points we just use the midpoint formula of 0 0.74 uh, 0 0.7 and 0 0.4 and 0 0.3 0 0.8 using those two lines we uh, find the midpoint and draw the lines over there to fill up to we have a function for to fill them fill both of them up which is update game boundary and update game state what update board boundary does it takes uh, input of C and R which is column and row and X1, X, Y1 will be the starting or an ending of one line and X2, Y2 will be starting or ending point of another line. Take those two points, checks which one is bigger and then according to that fills the board boundary um, according to the rows and columns which we have given. Uh, fills the X2 and Y2 the same X1 or Y1. For midpoint, it takes uh, it takes the points, finds the midpoint of them, and using the column and row which we have given, it just fills in those values. Uh, what game? What this for loop is doing is just looping through the entire. Just a display statement for the game boundary and the XO placements, just to show okay the the array is filled up before we can start the game. Update game state is uh, we just give it the column and rows we want and x or zero so it can be one or two whatever you want it to do it just fills those values up so next time uh, if we use the next time we use game state array or we call it or we read it somewhere usually mostly in the while loop it knows okay if it's zero I don't need to draw anything on it if it's one I need to draw a circle if it's two I need to draw uh, an X in that position oh, now we can jump on the mouse click function We start off the mouse click function by first declaring x position y position as 0. Mouse button it takes a GLF windows which is the current uh, GLF window context we have uh, button and action and mod. This is a uh, this is the uh, this is set up by GLFW. This is from GLFW is a documentation of how they want the your mouse button to be called and what all inputs it should have uh, so if your mouse button is uh, if you click and it's a left click and it's a press then it, it updates the x and y position to be the current position of wherever you click using glfw get cursor position um, we, are we are changing the we are updating the position of the cursor not updating but changing the values of the first cursor because what X position Y position has is not in the same range of what OpenGL calculates its coordinates in. It's not in zero plus, not in zero one or zero minus one. It's in hundreds or two hundreds. Usually, according to what your uh, screen, what your window size is. Our case it was 800, 600. So it'll be according to those. So we just divide them and multiply them, subtract them. So it comes into negative one and one. We can use that in our other functions easily so if it's a left click we want it to be a, a circle run and for that we need to update our game state first so we, we do a normal for loop if it is between a, a board boundary click so if x is uh, greater than the board boundary 0 and it's smaller than the boundary one same way for y so if 
we go over here so if x is let's go back one second if x is greater than board boundary is zero so if x is greater than 0 0.3 and if x is less than 0 0.7 you can say so if, if the click is anywhere between this box whether we calculating the x and y it'll update the game state to show one for that column and row same thing we have for drawing the circle instead of having left mouse button we have right mouse button same thing we change the x portion we change the y portion to fit zero and one uh, standards for OpenGL same for loop and then we update game state for the coordinate and row to change it to 2 instead of 1 to represent ok it's an, it's an x call this time instead of a circle call uh, all of this gets updated into our uh, main The mouse is a callback function, so for that we need to have glfw set mouse button callback, which will be your window, and callback will be mouse button, which is our, which is the function which we created. Window is the, window is the correct context. Glfw set input mode will set. We give it the current window context, and mouse buttons and value as true. Now after we after we create the lines we have to uh, we have to populate the board boundary array we created array we created above so it'll be we give it we start off with zero and two so let's start off with this column zero and row zero which is I think this uh, top top left top left and it needs start of line 3 and end of line 1 so start of line 3 is this so it's minus 0 0.3 0 0.8 and end of line 1 is uh, minus 0 0.7 0 0.4 so anything any clicks between uh, x axis 0. Point, minus 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 and any click act clicks between 0 0.4 and 0 0.8 y axis register as a top left click uh, we do the same thing for uh, all the corner boxes because they're much easier at the starting because we already have values for the starting and end of end of those respective lines for the middle boxes we need uh, to find the midpoints or the for all the intersections of these lines so you can see line one the coordinates in red which is 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 is the place where line 1 intersects with line 2 and line 3 you need this to calculate uh, the boundary box for the middle boxes the center one and the mid left and mid right if you see over here uh, right mid it starts with start of L4 which is 0 0.7 and minus 0 0.4 and intersection of L4 which is 0 0.3 and uh, 0 0.4 uh, 0 0.3 0 0.4 and 0 0.7 0 0.4 L1 yeah so start of start of L1 about start of L1 and intersection of L4 anything between this area will count as mid right same thing we do it for mid left and for the center we have to give intersections for all the corners so intersection of either this intersection of either l1 l3 or l l1 l3 and l4 l2 or uh, l1 l2 and l3 l4 any any two corners you can give as the middle intersection now we come to the while loop for our program 
software will be updating the game state so every time every new frame whenever swap buffer is called which is the render buffer is replaced by the displayed buffer the, the placements we made so if any updates you made to the board it stays and it doesn't just go away because uh, it, the window refreshed and it starts to create from scratch so line draw of course will always draw the board how many how, how many other times you call it then we we loop or we loop through the game state because in the game state it's it all starts from zero and then we fill it with one or two one depends then uh, if it's a circle and x if two represents if it's a x so if in the game we loop through it if it's a one we build a circle radius and the number of counts you can adjust however you like and then the position of the circle will be the using our x and o position placements so it's always in the center of the box and not in some corner same way for building an x if we find any tools inside the whole game state uh, matrix we build an x in that we're using the position we have and then we used use program to use the shader program which we initialized earlier bind vertex or vertex array and swap buffers we also have gl wait events so it waits for any update before switching uh, the buffers but for us if it's in a while loop and it's always running it'll switch automatically uh, if we run this It's a normal uh, board and then on in the logs you can see our game board was empty at the starting and our X and no placement was also empty and then as as the lines are drawn and as the function uh, X and placement and game board boundary is called they populate and you can see game board boundary for the top left uh, it's minus 0 0.7 0 0.3 and if we go to our look at this minus 0 0.7 minus 0 0.7 and 0 0.3 so any any clicks between the minus 0 0.7 0 0.4 0 0.3 and 0 0.4 and 0 0.8 is recorded as a top left and when you click over here the the x or the circle is placed on the coordinate of minus 0 0.4 and 0 0.6 which is approximately the center of this box if we go to our game and then we click anywhere it draws over there and we right click anywhere it draws an x over there the game at the moment doesn't have any uh, win state condition or a lose state conditions you can technically have all x's or all zeros it doesn't matter the main focus of this uh, workshop was to show how to build a x or zero on an OpenGL window OpenGL context uh, making open statement or building an ai code you can do it yourself i think it's pretty simple for games so you just have to look through the game state on every loop check if uh, any row or any diagonal has one 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 or two 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 and that person is that user wins uh, to implement an AI to it would be after every move or if a player does a circle move or a, another AI does an X move it blocks the user from creating any other move until unless uh, the computer has done a move so it can be anything you can make it as intelligent as you want it's up to you but uh, that is about it uh, thanks for watching if you have any comments or suggestions you can put them in the uh, in the comment section of the video and we can try our best to help you out and uh, stay tuned for the next week's video as well thank you so much